I'm going to show you the perfect follow through for every shot and it's going to really help you to improve your game. There's a lot of people out there who think you shouldn't really be focusing on the end of the stroke. You should only focus on what happens leading into contact because once that ball's left the racket, what does it matter what the follow through looks like? It matters. Those people are wrong. I'm going to explain why, why you should be focusing on your follow through and what those follow throughs should look like. It is important to recognize that if you're not in the right place, let's say you're hitting a forehand and you're late, you're not gonna get the perfect ideal follow through because you're in a position where now you have to manipulate your body and the racket to control the tennis ball. And actually, if you focused on getting the perfect ideal follow through, you might end up missing that shot because you're gonna have to do something a little bit unorthodox to control that tennis ball. However, if I say we're looking for this kind of follow through back of the racket next to the arm, I'm going to rotate the arm of the racket around the body. Let's focus on that. Let's try and get that follow through as often as possible. That can often encourage people to get the ball in a position, get that contact point in a position that allows you to achieve the task of getting that follow through. If you're hitting a backhand or a forehand, your timing is not going to be absolutely perfect. So what we're looking to do is to send the racket through a zone. And if your path is good through the strike, it's going to increase your chances of hitting a clean shot. The most important reason for focusing on your follow throughs is to understand how to move your body and move the racket around your body effortlessly. If we can do that, quite a few good things come from it. First of all, injury prevention. If we're swinging like this on the serve, we're gonna pull on the shoulder, pull on the elbow, and if we can move the racket around the body like this, well, this is a more efficient, more effortless swing, which reduces the chance of injuries. And what happens then is once we have a good brake system, once we understand how to slow the racket down effortlessly, it gives us the ability and the confidence to speed it up. It's like when you have good brakes in your car, it gives you more confidence to accelerate faster. If your brake system is crap because you're sending the racket towards your legs or something, then you end up slamming the brakes on pretty early. So let's get that, this racket effortlessly moving around the body. Let's reduce injuries. And once we have that efficient, effortless path, we can speed it up knowing that we can slow it down smoothly. Now, if I'm working with beginners, they're not gonna be whipping this ball and finishing around the body like this. They're just gonna have nice, simple strokes, hopefully. And I'm gonna encourage them to get the back of the racket next to their head. Not much funky stuff is gonna happen through contact if we go from this position to the back of the racket being next to the head. It's gonna give you quite a clean stroke. I also do this with advanced players who have more of a continental grip or maybe slightly eastern, a little bit old school because again, they're not gonna be whipping it around their body. So finishing with the back of the racket next to the head, again, is a pretty solid swing path. That's gonna cut out all of the funky stuff that might cause you to start missing shots. With players who have a semi-western grip or put a little bit more top spin, a little bit more whip going on through their forehand, I'll ask them to finish with the back of the racket next to the arm as opposed to next to the head. It's a bit more of a natural follow through. I'll usually see where someone is naturally finishing with the stroke and either point them to back of the racket next to the head or next to the arm. Another thing that I'll sometimes ask someone to do is instead of thinking about back of the racket next to the arm, I'll talk about creating a box. So you can see between my chest, upper arm, lower arm, and racket, I've created a box. Now usually as we hit, that box will be facing to the left a little bit because of body rotation, but we're creating that box, which really moves the racket effortlessly around the body. So instead of things being connected here, holding onto that contact point all the way to the end of the shot, we rotate the arm, we rotate the racket, the racket starts to move effortlessly, efficiently, but faster around our body. So we get a little bit more racket speed when we focus on this kind of follow through. 
I've also asked players to show me the butt cap of the racket on the follow through. So for people who are coming through like this for a little bit too long, how quickly can you show me the butt cap of the racket? Because if you're able to do that, you'll start to rotate that forearm a little bit quicker and again, move that racket around your body a little bit more efficiently than holding on to that contact point all the way through the shot. All right, let's move on to the two-handed backhand. What I often see is people getting a little bit jammed and finishing with their right elbow low and sort of tucked into the ribs. So what I often encourage players to do is to get a high finish. Finish with the right elbow as high as your shoulder. If you focus on this task, the goal of getting this kind of finish, usually sends the racket through the strike zone for a little bit longer and also just gets you swinging the arms. So yes, you want the body and the arms to move in a synchronized manner, they're moving together, but you don't just want them to be totally together. You want the arms to move somewhat independent. You want them to swing as your body's rotating. So let me give this a go. Finishing high with the right elbow and also having this racket above the shoulder, not, not all the way down here, even though you see some pros doing it. I'll often ask people to get this high finish. And again, it just allows people to swing a little bit more freely right through the strike zone. Another thing you can do is, an occasion I'll do this, is to ask people to finish in this position. So it'll be somewhat of a three quarter shot. We won't be able to hit it that hard, but we'll finish in this position. And this is a position that you'll see a lot of pros get into. The racket's pointing a 45 degree angle upwards and it's sort of pointing where we wanted the ball to go. So if you can finish in this position here, it'll make sure that the path is correct for when you then follow through a little bit further. And that might help someone who does a lot of these things, all right, snapping it about and again, not getting through that contact point for as long as you probably should. Now, when it comes to hitting the one-handed backhand, personally, I like the backhand to look like this, where the, the arm is bent a little bit here. We're swinging through that strike with a straight arm, but as we get to the finish of the shot, we allow the arm to bend a little bit, and we finish with the racket somewhat close to the head, to the inside, as opposed to the arm staying straight and rotating this way, because I feel like some players do it. warrinka has got a little bit of that going on where the finish is over here. But for me, that puts a bit of strain on the shoulder. And also, I find that for players who do that, they tend to hit a little bit of side spin as they're pulling across the ball. So I would like to see the arm bending, the racket to the inside of the wrist, the, the hand. And I think that is a very effortless way of moving the racket around the body. And when I feel like I've got that swing path right and it feels effortless, it feels like I could do it if my racket was 200 times heavier, that's when I feel confident that I can accelerate through and not lose control, not lose the shape of the stroke just because, like, like if I did this, for example, I feel like I'd be spinning around. So I can allow this arm to bend a little bit, focus on the finish being to the inside instead of to the outside, and again, because my follow through is good, because my brake system is solid, gives me more confidence to accelerate all the way through to the finish. All right, so let's move on to the slice backhand. And I think focusing on the follow through of the slice is extremely important because a lot of people tend to do some funky stuff which obviously hurts their ability to control the tennis ball. So first of all, the best way of hitting a slice is to feel like the racket and the arm are connected. If I laid something across my string bed, it would sit on my arm and it's gonna be like that from start to contact to finish. So I'm not gonna be flipping it about or anything like that. It's gonna look like this. Now, when we finish the shot, what we could focus on is the strings like this so I could rest my beer on it, right? and also pointing the racket towards where we want that ball to go. 
What we don't want to do is to be flipping and finishing with the racket turning over here. If you do that, again, you won't be able to accelerate through the shot because as soon as you do this, it's like a runaway train. We'll talk about this a little bit more on the volleys where a lot of people struggle to have this solid shape at the end of the shot. They tend to flip the racket and then all they end up doing is squeezing tight and preventing themselves from making errors. So we need to feel like at the end of the shot, we have good structure. And the way we're gonna do that is by making sure that the heel of the hand is pushing against the top of the racket and the racket and the forearm are working as one piece. So if we can finish the shot in this position, you can see how my, my racket can't actually get in line with my arm here because it's being blocked off by my heel. If I move it like this, I have all of this movement. Or if I do it like this, I'm behind the ball, like in a, a east and backhand grip, that's also gonna cause us uh, to have a couple of issues there. So we want the hand right on top of the racket. We wanna use this heel as a break. Once we finish the shot, we wanna finish like we can rest the ball on top of the racket. And because we have this structure, because we have this brake system, at the end we can accelerate through the shot and we're not gonna lose shape. All right, let's move on to the volley because it ties in perfectly with the slice backhand. It's the same thing. We need the heel of the hand pushing against the grip. We need the arm and the racket to work as one piece. We're not behind the racket, we're not in front of the racket, we're right on top. And what I think should happen when you hit a backhand volley is we should put slice on the ball because that actually helps to get the finish of the shot strong. If we hit the ball flat, what tends to happen is this ends up happening and the racket flips, the heel no longer works as a break, and now we end up just restricting our movements to make sure we don't lose control of the follow through and of the ball. So see if you can finish this shot with the strings slightly open because that's gonna give you a chance to use the break and to really have a controlled finish. And again, when we have a controlled finish, we can accelerate into the finish. When it comes to the forehand volley, we're gonna hit it solid if we can take the fingers and the wrist out of the shot. We wanna just lay the hand back and keep that position all the way to the finish. On the finish of the shot, we don't wanna pass the ready position. A lot of people will do that if they're swinging or if they're releasing. So I encourage you to finish this shot with the wrist still laid back, the right shoulder behind the left, and just feel like you have that solid contact. We're not swinging this part of the racket any more than this part of the racket. We're keeping it back and we're blocking. So it's gonna look something like this. And again, focusing on that follow through where the right shoulder is behind the left and the hand is laid back is a great way of developing that structure and that solid volley that we're looking for. All right, let's talk about the serve and the kind of follow through I would be looking for if I was working with you. Now, obviously everyone's a little bit different, but what I can say is I have helped thousands of players by focusing on finishing down the left of your body, if you're right-handed, in this kind of position where the side of the racket that you've hit the ball with is facing your leg or your hip, back of the racket out. So what we're doing is rotating the body rotating the arm and the racket around our body as efficiently as possible. And again, if we get that efficient motion where, by the way, we are now pronating, we don't have to do some weird stuff up here, we're just rotating the arm effortlessly and that's giving us pronation. If we can do this, if we have this kind of swing path, we can now accelerate all the way to the finish because we've created a path for our racket to follow that is far better than these kind of positions where you're sending the racket towards your legs and now you have to slam the brakes on or you're finishing down here or this wrist so this kind of swing path allows me now to have the confidence and ability to accelerate all the way to the finish crikey i gotta i gotta i gotta pump these things up a little bit now, if you're hitting some spin serves, whether that slice where we're cutting across it and around it slightly, or a top spin serve where we're brushing up the back of the ball, 
The follow through might be a little bit different, but you may want to finish in this position where the racket is in front of you. So it's following that path and the arm can then just rotate as opposed to it coming out here and flipping around. Give yourself a finishing position that will be efficient. And if you can follow that path, again, it's gonna allow you to move the racket around your body effortlessly. Let's give it a go. If you enjoyed that, if you got something out of it, please hit like, comment, and subscribe. And if you wanna work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can sign up for my video analysis program at tpatennis.com. You can send me unlimited videos each month and I will respond to each video with a personalized tailored video just for you.